Welcome back guys, this is Jake from Jake's Offshore Adventures. Today we're going on another charter and you guys are going to come and join along with us. And uh, what's your name? David Lee. David Lee, welcome aboard. Thank you, um, Jake. Have you ever been spearfishing before? Never. Never? Alright, well you're going to learn today. Absolutely. Alright, so these guns, they look pretty complicated, um, but they're pretty simple. I'm going to go over the guns um, and some of the diving as well and what we're going to be doing underwater so that way all your questions are hopefully answered and if you have any questions at the end, um, feel free, I'll be able to answer them. So these guns are 100% homemade. Uh, they are made from a guy named Ed from Kill Shot Spear Guns. He lives, uh, or he works just a mile up the road. Um, super cool shop. You guys should definitely check it out. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Ed. Uh, he's actually moving into a new store, um, which is the store next to his. is going to be way bigger, way cooler. So definitely check that out. Um, but he hand makes these guns. This is the only guns I shoot. They're my favorite guns. Um, they come in all different sizes. This happens to be a 55 inch, and so is this. You'll see one has two bands, one has three bands. Um, they all work the same, they do, they do the job. Um, but they're all made out of teak, handmade. Um, they have a standard AR grip. Um, some of them, most of them have COA trigger mechanisms. Um, so it's, it feels like shooting a gun um, in, in the hand right here. Um, you have your trigger mech right here. Um, these are called shark fins. You have your shaft your bands, and then you have your flopper here at the end of your shaft. Okay, all you have to worry about today is shooting the fish. Um, I'm going to be taking care of loading the gun for you, unloading it, unless that's something you're interested in learning how to do. Um, I suggest maybe for the first dive, I, I'll focus on all that stuff so you can kind of focus on diving and uh, shooting the fish. So basically how these guns work, um, when these bands are pulled back to the shark fins, okay, it is now loaded. So now it's a loaded weapon, um, no pointing it or sticking it in anyone's faces. Um, just general gun safety when coming to spearfishing. Um, same thing underwater. What happens is underwater, um, people forget that they have the gun. They get in la la land, they see a pretty fish and they're swimming around and you know, they're throwing the gun behind them. They're looking different directions and they, they aren't keeping their eyes pointed where their spear gun's pointed, which is what I always try to tell people is keep your eyes on your tip of your spear, looking forward, um, so that way you're making sure you're not pointing it at anyone else. Um, that being said, you know, the guns fail, you know, regular guns fail all the time. Um, so these could by accidentally go off underwater. It's happened to me maybe once in my couple thousand dives down here. Um, so these guns are built very well but once these bands are loaded back here um, it's ready to fire okay and unlike a normal gun people are used to holding them like this right all right we're gonna hold this straight out and we're gonna put our hand right behind here and there will be a little bit of recoil um, but not much the recoil is just gonna be like a little jerk back it's not gonna be drastic but this back of the hand on the butt of the gun um, this helps you steady your shot as well you know you don't really want to take one hand shots um, when just firing these guns you want to see the fish when i'm swimming around i like to hold the gun right here in the middle eyes down facing forward uh, on the tip of the spear gun um, and that way you're more um what do you call it uh, oriented no uh you're more streamlined sorry i, I had a brain fart um, you're more streamlined. You don't want to be, uh, you don't want to be holding this out, swimming around, looking for fish. You look like a predator. Right. So if you keep this to your body, nice and streamlined and just focus on having a good dive and that big fish will probably swim in front of you. What happens a lot of time is you put a gun, I put a gun in someone's hand, they start breathing a lot faster. They're excited. Um, and, and that's not what you want to be doing when you go to shoot big fish. You ever walk into the woods without a gun and see a deer? Without a gun, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's just like that. You know, you go diving, you don't have a gun, you always see the big fish. Yeah. The time you bring a gun, you don't see a big fish. That's usually how it works. Um, and it's because people uh, are acting like predators underwater and the fish aren't likely to swim up to you when you are. You're in kill mode. You're in kill oh, mode, yeah. Experience. So pretty much the main thing is, you know, just go down, focus on having a good dive. And if a big fish swims in front of us, we're going we're gonna to get them. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna kill it. We're gonna kill it. Um, you have any questions about this gun? How uh, it works or anything like you that? You know, I I, uh, I I heard everything you said. I like the idea of stabilizing out there. Mm -hmm. I would guess also because it's wood, 
it's not it doesn't have a tendency to sink. It's probably perfectly balanced. Yeah. With that. So actually, that's a very good point. With the shaft in the gun, it will sink. Okay. When you shoot it, and the shaft's just hanging out of the gun, it's going to be neutrally buoyant. Right. So the shaft will sink, but the gun will stay mid-water column, um, okay. which is weird. Let's say you shoot, and shark comes, bites the shaft off the gun and it's just the gun. Well, now the gun's gonna float and now it's just a piece of wood. Makes sense. So that's a very, very good question. I'm glad you asked that. How about the, the sighting of it? Because like you said, normally you are you have a yeah, profile so there's, like this. There's and no you, red you, dot sight. There's no. nothing like that. <laughs> no. So um, you're gonna be holding out in front of you. You're gonna be looking down, down the shark fins and down the gun. And you want to make sure that you're not holding it close to your face. Because remember, there's recoil. Yeah. <laughs> there's recoil, and if this thing hits you in the chin, it's like not going to feel it. It's going to feel like someone sucker punched you. Um, but, but yeah, no, that's basically it with the guns. Um, when we get out to the dive spot, we're going to go diving. Uh, probably hook up to a ball or anchor. Um, we'll get in our gear on this engine hatch or up onto the side of the boat. We'll help you into your gear. Um, I will hop in the water with the gun, you know, I don't know when's the last time you've been diving, but you know, I'll let you get in, get acclimated, um, get down to the dive site and the gun will be loaded ready for you. You don't have to worry about any of that. And uh, when we get down there, just sit next to me. It's only you and no one else today, so it's going to be a great day, hopefully. Um, you're just going to stick right next to me and uh, when I point out some fish, you're gonna shoot it. Uh, question, how uh, how far of a shot distance? Another great question. Um, your shot distance, <laughs> an ideal shot distance, is about what I like to say, double the gun length. Really? Wow, okay. Yeah, so not very far, right? You wanna be pretty dang close to these fish. You, yeah. Um, a, a good reference is, this probably has, I'd say, 15 foot of shot line, 15 to 20 foot of shot line. It doesn't have 15 to 20 foot of range. If you shot all the way to the end of the shot line, it's it's not going to have enough power to continue. Because the force it. dissipates from the friction of the yeah, water. Yeah, it will shoot the entire length of the line, um, but it's not going to shoot. It, as it goes further, it loses power. So when you um, shoot an animal, you hold on to the grip, right? Because it's going to maybe flop around. So another good question. Once you shoot, I'm hopefully going to be right next to you. And if it's a really big fish, I, I will be helping with, with that because it, it becomes dangerous and you want to get that fish to you as close as possible. Usually when someone shoots a fish, they're so excited and they start breathing and then they start to float up. It's the funniest thing. It happens to everybody. Cool. Um, so when you shoot a fish, just remember to stay calm um, and, and breathe normally and I'll be right there to help fight that fish for you. Um, the normal procedure is after you shoot that gun, you put those bands around your arm and then what that gun does is it floats up behind you and you don't gotta worry about it all right and then once you got it over your shoulders now you got both hands free to fight that fish on that line and okay. bring it into you yeah and the flopper keeps that from pulling yeah, back out and so when you shoot the idea is when you shoot and the fish starts to shake around on the shaft it's going to engage the flopper and just like fighting a fish, you don't want to leave some loose tension on that line when you're pulling in the fish. You want to keep it nice and tight okay. against the flopper. Keep the flopper tight. Yes, sir. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I'm sure we're going to have a few, but that felt good. All right, well, we'll go over those when we get out there, and we'll see you guys out there. Well, I hope you guys liked that little introduction of the guns. Definitely check out Kill Shot Spear Guns up the road. He makes amazing guns, and I highly recommend them if you're looking to purchase a new spear gun. Well, we made it out to our first spot. We're gonna get geared up and we're gonna go in. I'm gonna put you up here on top of my head and you're gonna come along with us. All right, you ready, David? I am, sir. All right, let's do this.
we get down there, um, I let the customer get acclimated, make sure his buoyancy is good, and then I'll pass him the gun. And we started going down the wreck, and right about here, I noticed two really nice African pompanos sitting over the wreck. And I didn't even notice the two other ones sitting to the left of them. You'll see them here in a second. And I tried not to engage in them. Um, and when we got a little bit closer, I pointed them out to David and uh, let him try to get close and take a shot. So here the fish actually start to swim away and David threw up his shot and he was plenty close enough but the shaft just ended up going right by the fish which is very unfortunate. Um, I tried to throw a Hail Mary shot to get the second one but unfortunately I missed as well and uh, we didn't end up getting these fish this day. Being able to have an opportunity on this fish is what it's all about when you guys come down here and I try to do my best to put you on them but sometimes it just doesn't always work out and uh, it was still a great dive, um, but really good learning opportunities. Um, like I said before, after you guys take your shot, make sure you stay calm so that way you don't lose your buoyancy and start to float up um, like you see here. Um, towards the end of the dive, um, I saw that David was at 1,000 PSI, so it was time to tell him it's time to go up and we started to head back to the line. got back to the line David was around 500 psi um, which I like to switch them out to my air I actually had over two grand left still and I switched them out just to be safe and whenever uh, you take your regulator out make sure you hold that in your hand so if uh, we do get separated you still have that reg in your hand and air left to put it back in your mouth we went up to the safety stop and we stop at our safety stop at 20 feet here for three minutes and uh, let ourselves decompress. to the surface guys we just came up from our first dive um, absolutely amazing first dive David saw um, some African pompanos and I tried to put him on him unfortunately he missed it was his first time ever shooting a spear gun so those things kind of happen and uh, I mean just a great overall experience being able to have that opportunity on those fish is super cool um, I tried to take a, a second shot after he shot, but unfortunately after he shot, you know, the fish started to spook a little bit. Um, so I threw a little Hail, hail Mary and, and missed the mark. So um, happens sometimes, that's the reality of things out here. Um, and it's good for you guys to see. So that way, when you guys come out and dive with me, um, hopefully you guys are ready and that doesn't happen to you. So it was a little rough out and David wasn't feeling the best. So we ended up going in. Um, but I ended up going back out later and came upon something amazing. Uh, five big bluefin tuna showed up and you know that's what it's all about, seeing cool things underwater and getting great opportunities. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.